Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. I just really feel that just in this moment as we move out of the way, I, 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 I really feel because the Lord is such a gentleman that he will not force himself on anyone. Word of the Lord says, the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. For I stand at the door and I knock. And I just really sense this very strongly. I, I'm a gig, yeah, God. I sense this very strongly that the Lord is knocking at somebody's heart right now. Jesus is knocking at your heart right now in this moment. And you cannot miss this moment and this opportunity to just surrender your all to the Lord. I, 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 I really sense and feel like that what the Lord is doing in this moment, what he's doing in this season, people of God, is he's, he's activating gifts and he's activating ministry. And he's releasing, he's releasing anointings in this moment. He's, he's pouring out mantles upon his people in this moment. And the thing that's really going to get you out of you, the thing that's really going to separate you from being that person that always trips out when you go through this and when you go through that, that the thing that's going to make you the most confident, the thing that's going to make you the most satisfied is not gaining all of these natural things. I'm here to tell you, people, it's not gaining all of these natural things. I know we hear it and sometimes we blow it away and we just say the preacher is just, he's just too emotional and the praise leader is just too emotional. But I'm here to tell you that in the midnight hour when I thought I was going to lose my mind, it was not money in the bank that saved me. But it was, it was being able to fall on my face and when I couldn't say nothing else, all I said was Jesus. All I said was Jesus and my mindset began to shift and my, my spirit began to be lifted up and my heart began to be mended back. There's something when you know that all you got to do is call upon the name of Jesus. And I know this is unorthodox. I know this is not the place you're supposed to do this in the service, but I feel like Jesus is calling out for a backslider today. I feel like Jesus is calling out for a wayward son or a wayward daughter. You've been running in the streets long enough. You've been sitting idly in the church long enough because you can be in the church and still don't know Jesus you can come to one o'clock service every Sunday and still don't know Jesus but I feel the Lord say today if you would just open up your heart I will come and visit you in a fresh way I will come and renew you in a fresh way I don't know who this is for but I dare you to just shoot your hands up real high uh, and we're about to move out of the way but the band is really about to lift this up uh, and just play us in a prophetic uh, uh, utterance in this moment uh, because all I hear the Lord is saying if you would just open up. The pastor can't do it for you. The, the praise team can't do it for you. But late in the midnight hour when you feel like you're losing it all, it is calling upon the name of Jesus. That's going to save you. It's calling upon the name of Jesus. That's going to rescue you. I don't know who the next president is going to be. I don't know who the next this and that is going to be. But I'm here to say that I got the greatest king. I got the greatest lord of all the universe. And whatever I lose, I still got Jesus. Whatever Whatever I don't have, I still got Jesus. Where is a mature believer in the house that says, God, you don't got to do a whole lot for me, but all I need you to do is just keep wrapping your arms around me. All I need you to do is just keep loving on me. All I need you to do is just keep just keep pouring over me. Come on for a few more moments. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Come on, he's calling for you. He's calling for you. If you gotta break out of the chair and just get into the highway, whatever you gotta do, Jesus is calling for you. For the river of living water, it's flowing in this house. If you jump in the river, deliverance will come. If you jump in the river, breakthrough will come. If you jump in the river, victory, 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 victory. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, come on, few more moments, few more moments. Come on, come on. Yeah, tabo ho shandera na na baha. Shika ta ta baba ho ko sha. Shika ta ta baba baba ha sha. Shika ta ta ko baba baba. Come on, come on. 
this worship uh, is just to let you know, God, uh, that I thank you when I thought I was going to lose it all. Uh, you somehow stepped in, uh, and you stepped in right on time. Uh, this worship uh, is for the person uh, that said, God, when I was wayward, uh, when I wanted to do things my own way, uh, thank you that you wouldn't let me go too far. Thank you that you wouldn't let me fall uh, when I wanted to fall into sin. Uh, thank you that you kept on pulling me in. Uh, thank you that you kept on reaching me in. Uh, oh, God, uh, I'm just here to love on you. Uh, I'm here to worship you uh, because you kept me, uh, because you kept me, uh, and you keep on keeping me. Uh, you keep on keeping me. Uh, you keep on keeping me. You keep on keeping me. Uh, when others forsake me, uh, when others throw me away, uh, when others throw me away, uh, you keep on keeping, uh, you keep on keeping, uh, you keep on keeping me. Come on, few more moments, few more moments, few more moments. Uh, I know this may not be for everybody, uh, but this is for the radical hungry people. Uh, come on. Come on, you keep on keeping me. Uh, you keep on keeping me, uh, and your power, your grace, uh, your mercy sustains me. Uh, you sustain me. Uh, you sustain me. Uh, you sustain me. Uh, you sustain me. You sustain me. Uh, yes, you will. Yes, you will. Uh, yes, you will. Uh, you sustain me uh, in every season. You sustain me uh, in every moment uh, through sickness, uh, through pain. Uh, you sustain me. You sustain me. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. You don't need our worship, but you seek it anyways, Lord. thank the Lord. Can we thank the Lord? If, if, if you could look over your shoulder and just see where he brought you from to where you are today, I know we would be clapping a lot louder. Amen. Can you thank the Lord? I mean, I don't know what you've been through this week to get here right now at this moment, but can you thank the Lord? Matter of fact, I don't even know what you went through this morning to get to this moment. Can you thank the Lord? Yes, Jesus, hallelujah. How many all understand that you are blessed by good ministry? How many all understand that you are blessed by good pastorship? We got a lot to be thankful for, amen? I just want to go over a few announcements. We want to thank everyone for supporting the Ascend Live recording. How many of y'all were blessed with that? We can't wait for that to come out. We want to let you know we have a regular schedule, Tuesday prayer, Wednesday new community, all junior high, high school, and college. We have our midweek youth service this Wednesday in our student chapel. We want to make sure that you all attend that. Right now, uh, we want to let you know that next Sunday at 1 o'clock, 
We're going to have Dr. Jeffers with us. We're also going to have Dr. Jeffers on Monday and Tuesday at 7 o'clock. So you can thank the Lord for that. Amen. At this time, we're going to ask Sister Janet to come up. She has an announcement to make for all the sisters. Lord, everyone, um, this is especially to you women. We will be having a women's conference this Saturday at 9. We have kind of no breakfast. At 9.30, we'll have prayer. And at 10 a.m., we will have um, a woman's day. And every one of you women, you are invited. Please come. It's a day just for you. You know, as mothers, you don't, well, some of us or people, we don't really have birthdays anymore or be celebrated you know it's more for our children our husband but on Saturday it's your day it's a day to celebrate you it's a day for you and as AJC we are preparing for your miracle for other women that come through that door for their miracle there will be deliverance healing restoration salvation I believe it I declare it I stand here women please come join us support us and um uh, it is a free event. We all like free stuff. and But all we ask is that you please sign up just so we get a count of who will be here. And if you are more than willing to donate, we will take it. Um, we love you, AJC. God bless you. Amen. All the fathers, we're playing the mother and father role on Saturday. Amen. We're able to free up our, our lovely wives so they can have their day and and we're going to put aside everything else, and we're going to do whatever we can to make sure that they show up here on time. And we're not going to give them any curfew. They could be slain here in the Lord all night long. We're going to cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We're going to have the dishes done when they get home. Amen? I don't know about vacuuming, but we're going to have the dishes done when they come home. Amen? Praise God. I want you all to stand right now. We're going to welcome God's favorite, most servant pastor, oh I'm sorry, we're going to pick up the offering, well I only had one good intro, so my next intro is going to be I'm going to introduce Pastor Benny Gear. but at this time, we get excited in the Lord, amen, if we could have the ushers come up, and we're going to pick up our offering, praise team. Joy and laughter, we want to swim in the water. 
glad to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. You be so kind to open your Bibles to Psalms chapter 16 and verse 8. Publicly, once again, we want to thank the whole music team that did such a phenomenal job last Sunday. Amen. Lifting up Jesus, making his name glorious and known. And uh, we, we just want to thank them for all their hard work. And, uh, we want to thank Sister Janet in advance for uh, this amazing conference that AJC is sponsoring uh, this this weekend, amen, her and her uh, staff. I mean, we want to encourage every sister to come out uh, and support this event. It is for you. And then Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, we're just going to enjoy the presence of the Lord, the Word of God, amen, uh, with, with Dr. Jeffers and a good friend of ours. And what a way to wrap up all the good things God is doing here at AJC, amen, and with our family week with uh, Dr. Jeffers. God is amazing. Psalm chapter 16 and verse 8 says, I have set the Lord always, everybody say always, before me. Amen. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Oh, there, 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 there is a powerful confidence over the body of Christ in unchangeable times and things that we cannot predict. Amen. Amen. For all you whiners, yes, the Cubs did win the World Series. Amen. There are just some things you can't predict. Uh, I think 103 years, they, they kept on hoping. I said, my God, uh, maybe my grandchildren are going to see the Raiders win the Super Bowl. I'm just, I'm just playing. I'm, no, no, in, in the midst of instability God never changes and as long as I'm focused on the Lord amen as long as my eyes are set upon him he is my right hand and I shall not be moved I want to preach for a few moments on the subject it's going to get loud in here <laughs> amen Turn to your neighbor and say, it's going to get loud in here. Amen. Somebody in back here, tell them, it's going to get loud in here. Amen. That's what I'm going to preach about today. It's going to get loud in here because our confidence is in a kingdom that is unshakable, a king that can never get voted out of uh, his kingship. We serve a God that is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and all is well. In the house of the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. In my last message two weeks ago, I told you that Satan doesn't mind you going to church. Or saying you're a Christian. As long as there's no change in your life. As long as there's no depth, depth in your relationship with him. And there was no sacrifice to offer. Just like Pharaoh put restrictions to Moses, Satan does the same thing to us in regards to our relationship with God. Satan loves religion, but he hates relationship. Because relationship will always require change. It will always take us to deeper places in God. And there is always a sacrifice that is involved. Amen. Something that costs us something. We are living in a world right now, especially America, that is unease of what's going to be the outcome of November 8th. This Tuesday, the United States of America will elect a new president. And it is great uncertainty that people anticipate who's going to become the new president. And whether it's the Republican or the Democrat or the Democrat or the Republican, there will be unease after the election. 
There will be times of chaos. And so we know that there's uncertainty on one side. On the other side, it's the threat of terrorism. In front of us, it's the rumors of war. And in the midst of uncertainty, I got good news. There is one thing that is certain. I say there is one thing, not your bank account, not your job, not, not your, one thing that is certain, and that is God himself. God is unshakable. He is immovable. Amen. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. His kingdom can never be shaken. He can never lose. And in heaven there is always victory. And I'm glad today we could be joyful today. I guarantee you Wednesday morning I'll be just as joyful as I am today. Wednesday morning I'll have a peace and a confidence. Because Proverbs 18 says the name of the Lord is a strong tower. And the righteous they run into it and they are saved. The world could be falling apart nations can be falling apart but I guarantee you in the house of the Lord there is always victory there is always joy and there is always provision and protection there will be noise in this house we will get louder in the midst of chaos why our king is triumphant We live in a world that is increasingly strive, who strives to promote the idea of tolerance, but actually becomes intolerant of the Christian worldview, especially in regards to the name of Jesus. The value of life and the sanctity of marriage is under attack. The devil would like to silence the church. And keep us intimidated of his devices. You see the world is getting louder. The world is getting louder in their world views. The world is getting louder and it seems like the church is getting more scared. Seems like the church is getting more intimidated because we've, we, we've fallen into this thing that the church needs to be politically correct. That we're not here to offend anybody. Jesus said that you will be persecuted in his name. You will be persecuted because you believe in the name of Jesus. We're not here to be BFFs with the world. We're here to stand up for truth. We're here to be the light. We are here to let the world know there is one solution and his name is Jesus. Amen would like us to say the nice things the the politically correct things so that no one is offended and if we do stand for truth and defend the word of God then we are being judgmental amen I, I taught this on Wednesday class and, and it was a good Bible study I thought so amen and I said it doesn't matter if you're Christian other world religions atheist agnostic everybody will quote Matthew chapter 1 verse 1 Everybody knows Matthew chapter 7 and verse 1. That is, do not judge. Amen. Bam. We, we can't judge. We, but they silence us because, hey, huh, you, you, you're Christian. You cannot be judged. Isn't that what Jesus said? Well, Jesus was telling the people, you got to make sure that your heart is right before you judge. You, you got to have a fresh understanding of forgiveness and grace uh, so that when you are able to judge between right and wrong, you're in that fresh mindset uh, of grace and forgive. Come on, somebody. Uh, and so uh, Jesus says, uh, after you're done examining yourself, uh, then take the speck uh, out of your neighbor's eye. I want to tell you something right here and right now. Uh, we must stay in truth uh, and we must let truth defend it itself and we must take a stand on the word of God Amen. Oh, oh, but no you can't say that well you'll scare people don't, don't you don't oh don't you even start doing that all that excitement in your church no I don't like that 
Just talk to me nice. I don't like noise. I, I, I don't like my feathers to be ruffled. I, I don't like to know that, I'm, that I need to be changed. But I got something to remind the church. And that is, we are powerful. And we walk in authority that has been given by God. Amen. And once we start operating in this power and the authority, the devil will start retaliating uh, through fear and manipulation. You see, Paul and Silas were full of the spirit of God. They were full of the power of God. And they started stirring up some trouble. Uh, and they started healing folks. Uh, people were starting getting delivered. Uh, and, and there was just a big outcry uh, of, you, you know, of what, the people of God, Paul and Silas, were doing. And so they brought them before the magistrates. And in Acts chapter 16, verse 20, it says these men are Jews and are throwing our city into an uproar. I can't wait till Modesto says, hey, you hear about AJC? They're praying for the sick. They're going to urgent cares. They're going to emergency centers. They're going into the hospitals. They're going into the crazy house. And they're, they're preaching the name of Jesus and people are being healed people's medical coverage is going to double even triple in some states people are losing their, their doctors their, their, their health care providers I, I, I even hear uh, our our, our kids' doctor, um, the pediatrician, she, she was telling my wife, she said, I, I'm so sad. Some of our uh, patients, uh, they no longer could come here, and they got to go to urgent care. Urgent care is their primary doctor. That's hours, hours of waiting uh, uh, for your kid uh, to, you, you know, to get some medicine for their kids. Uh, there, there, there's people that are going to be dropped from their medical insurance. Let me tell you something. This is not a time for chaos. This is not time for the church to, to you, you, you know, succumb to, to fear. This is our opportunity to operate in the power, in the authority of who you are. You're not a lazy Christian. You're not this little the washed up Christian. You are full of the power and the authority of God and it is time that we rise up and we take a stand and we say, I got something better than medicine. I got Jesus. And in the name of Jesus, I declare you healed. Amen. Praise God. And so they got Paul and Silas and they beat them. They they, they, they beat them and, and they tied them up and they, they put them into jail. Uh, God told me this week uh, in, in prayer, he said, son, America is living in the best and worst of times. Uh, and, and the result of best and worst is based on people's choice to live righteously or unjustly. You, there is confusion. There is chaos. There is insanity that is over overflowing uh, this country like never before. We don't even know what we like, what we do. I mean, somebody said, I'm a bird. I mean, I don't you know, it's like, really? You think you're a bird? You, you think you want to be married to a horse? There's just massive confusion that is taking over this church. The moment there was a, a rainbow over the White House, destruction was set in view. There was strongholds, demonic, sexual, perverse strongholds that has come against America. We don't got those precious hours that we could play church and get away with. This is time where we make a decision. What side are you? Are you on the Lord's side? Are you on the devil's side? Are you on the other side of the pillar of fire? Are you on this side? Come on, somebody. The children of Israel, the pillar of fire, was their protection for, for Pharaoh. It meant destruction. I've come to let somebody here to know it's time to stop playing church and it's time to start being the church. Man. I've run into so many backsliders, so many people playing church. They crazy. 
Hey, good to see, hey, 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 good to see how you're doing. Oh, good. I'll be at church tomorrow. God's been doing good. I got so much to tell you. Okay, I just said, God bless you. So much confusion, so much depression, so much craziness that's overtaken, looming over cloud of destructions over uh, over our cities, over our country, over our you, you know children. Just different belief systems, different concepts uh, that you, you know calling good bad and bad good. I mean, we're all. Amen. Amen. So they beat them. They tied them up. They, they put them in jail. They were trying to break down Paul and Silas to remind them that they have no power. They have no authority. They have no right to try to bring the name of Jesus in their city. Let me tell you something. Little by little, the enemy has come in and tried to break down your mindset. Try to intimidate you and say, don't you even operate in the authority of God because I'll come after your family. I'll destroy your home. I'll come over your health. And so Paul and Silas, they were thrown in the jailhouse. But let let me tell you something when you got the authority and the power of God you realize that it's not the circumstance and it's not the situation that you're in but it's the promise that is in you it's the promise that is before you and your promise is always greater than the problem around you I want to tell you something the promise in you always has power over the problems around you and Paul and Silas one thing the world couldn't take from them and that was the power of God yes we still speak in tongues we still have the name of Jesus the devil cannot take our religious liberty he'll try to shut us up he'll try to tell us to be quiet he'll try to silence us but once we get together They took prayer out of the schools. One point. I just even heard somebody. Uh, they couldn't even say God. One nation under. Why? Because God is so offensive to people. Hey, just say you're religious, but don't talk about Jesus. Don't don't talk about all your little supernatural stuff. And, and you know who. who you know, that's just scary. Just, just stay away. Yeah, it's scary, but then they'll hang zombies on their trees for Halloween. I don't know. I, I don't get this. I don't get this. They'll come to church and they'll freak out. And then you'll see millions of people around the Cubs screaming and shouting till 3 in the morning. I, I don't get it all, oh, but you come to church. Oh, it's too loud, emotional. I don't like all that stuff. Just weird. People are just weird. And, 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 you, and they'll silence us. They'll try to tell us to be quiet. They'll try to tell us to, you know, you cannot say the name of Jesus. You cannot pray in the schools. You, 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 you cannot use, uh, you, you know, one nation under God. Don't even mention the name of Jesus. Uh, you know, they'll pass abortion laws. The last year or two years, they, they, they passed uh, the, the same-sex marriage. You know, all of these points on their side. But I got one thing uh, that we will not give up, uh, and that is our religious liberty, uh, the ability to assemble in one place uh, and make the name of Jesus great and loud in this house and I want to tell you little religious folks uh, this is not our moment to get to this church uh, and be quiet this is all, all we got uh, in this house uh, and while we're here let's make the name of Jesus loud come on come on I'm in Tie up the zombies, hang them on the tree, say happy Halloween, but you can't say Merry Christmas. You can't have a manger. Those days of offending somebody is over. We're going to praise God with everything we got. Jesus. Jesus. That's it. Jesus. Jesus. Devil, demons, tremble at the name of Jesus. 
every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. I wish I had somebody real quick. Open up your mouth and say, Jesus. 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 Jesus in the morning. Jesus in the noonday. Jesus at the church house. Jesus in my house. Jesus in the workplace. Wherever I go. Jesus. 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 Yeah, Jesus. Who do you serve? Jesus. I serve a God that has a name and his name is Jesus. what we know what happened Paul and Silas they had themselves a apostolic <laughs> amen just two of them I, I, I've come to just uh, understand that you know as long as I get another worshiper next to me I'm okay because all y'all I don't know it's like you forget what God did for you from last week to this week you come in all tired, serve the Lord with madness, sadness. I, mean, I, I don't got time to be pumping you up. Remember what God did you. Remember what. Forget those days are long gone. Amen. But I need somebody. So when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, can I get a witness? Can I get it to the left? Can I get it to the right? I'm just looking for somebody that's going to get loud with me because we will not be silent. We will not be quiet. Amen. Uh, they, they, they told him, uh, Paul and Silas, uh, after uh, the Holy Ghost broke out uh, in Acts chapter 16, verse 35, they said, oh, we, we need to go shut these guys up. They messed up the jailhouse. They had revived. Let me tell you something. When God is in you, you can mess up any environment. Come on. I don't care if you're tied up on a hospital bed through sickness. I don't care if the devil's trying to attack you. What's in you is greater than what's outside of you. And Paul and Silas, they understood I'm in the jailhouse, but the jailhouse isn't in me because greater is he that is in me. Amen. Turn to your name and tell them what's in you can mess up any environment. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Amen. The name of Jesus. It'll change a situation. The name of Jesus. Amen. And so there was a great revival. Prisoners were getting saved. The, 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 the soldiers were getting baptized. And they got saved. And so they came to Paul and Silas. And they said... Oh, Yeah, you guys need to go now. Get out of our city and please quietly exit the building. That, that's what they said. And when it was day, the, the magistrate sent the surgeon saying, let those men go. Verse 36. Amen. And it said in verse 36. The jailer told Paul, the man have ordered that you and Silas be released. Now you can leave and go in peace. Oh, yeah. Shh. That's good. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're all fired up, but not in this house. Go. Shh. Go. 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 And Paul said to the officers, all right, let, let, let me, this, this is the word. This is the, the whole premise of this sermon is that whenever the enemy had come, has come into a, in like a flood in the history of the Bible, whenever there was always a spiritual oppression that was trying to destroy and kill off the remnant of God, there was always one, maybe two, maybe three, more than three, uh, crazy folks that were louder 
Then the situation, come on. I mean, these Israel were slaves to Pharaoh, to Egypt. And here comes Moses saying, Pharaoh, the day of slavery has an expiration date and it ends now. Let my people, let me tell you something. In the midst of oppression, there's somebody in this house who will rise up with power. I mean, they'll even take down their chungle and say, devil, really? You want to play this guy? I'll rebuke you in the name of... I wouldn't... Oh, that's too old school for you. You you like your antidepressants. You like to go get drunk. and get. That's how you get rid of your problems. I'm talking about old school. I'm talking about old school. I, I, I remember when... I got a duck tail. My parents were preaching a five-day revival somewhere. I won't mention names who was babysitting me because she's in the house today. And I had like this, what were they called, like spiky up here along on the top. You know, it was like late 80s, okay? And so duck tails were in. I said, oh, I want one, I want one. And so my mom and dad were evangelizing. I got my babysitter to give me a duck tail. Man, and I got that. You know, I mean, it was like this little, but it was like, a, I put it over my collar. A couple of days, just walking around. Got a duck tail. Bam. I'm, you know, you know, swag. I'm just walking in to school, walking home from the neighborhood. I remember, I don't know, it was Friday night or Saturday night, shows up. Mom and daddy get into the house, and I remember I was there. I said, hey, mom, how are you? And she didn't even say, how are you doing at school? How you? She looked at She said, oh, the blood of Jesus. And she got me by the neck. She said, I don't think so. In the name of, she took, I'll never forget, took me to the sink, got some scissors, and said, you are a man of God. You will not have the, I'll rebuke, I'll rebuke that day. I'll never forget that day. We need to rise up in the power and the authority and tell the devil, not in this house. get loud I said you gotta get loud I said when the devil gets loud you need to get louder when the devil's coming out to you and trying to silence you, trying to tell you to be quiet, trying to remind you of your past, trying to remind of who, what you did, who you were, somebody needs to look at him and say, you know what? I'm doing a good job. You done messed it up when you were in heaven. I'm in the midst of sinners and I'm doing a good job. <laughs> In the time that we're living in, the church needs to get louder and stronger. We are the living, we are living in glorious times. The rapture is soon to come and the devil knows it. He knows his days are numbered and would like for the church to be quiet. But Jubilee will never uh, go back to a quiet state. Uh, it will never go back to an intimidated state. Uh, it will never go to a place of complacency. It will never go back to a place of political correctness. Uh, it is time that we get louder and bolder. Uh, because you are the devil's worst nightmare. And it's time that we start acting like it. Uh, it's time we start acting like it. It's time we rise up uh, in the power and the authority uh, that we are in and start acting like it. Amen. And so we serve a notice today, right before election day, right before whatever takes place.